So number 28 on our very, very long list of federal, state, local places you can get financial assistance for you and your loved ones. Number 28 is people that get Medicare Advantage plans when they can actually get Medigap plans. I see a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, and this is way after the fact, after they've already signed up for Medicare A and B at 65, and then um, they got a call from some call center where in the, somewhere in the United States, uh, agents and brokers and companies make a lot more money selling Medicare Advantage than they do Medicare supplements, Medigap plans. And that why there's, that's why there's a, a, a big push for those particular plans. And you, and you think it's kind of counterintuitive. Wait a second. These are zero premium plans, the Medicare Advantage, but the Medigap plans and Medicare supplement plans actually cost a premium per month. And you figure, well, you know, they make less on this one, which in fact is the opposite in a lot of most respects. All right. So I have a lot of people contact me and they say, I, I should have signed up for a Medigap plan at the beginning. But one of the things, unlike, uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, unlike, uh, you know, private health insurance, pre existing conditions do apply in terms of Medicare supplements. So if you're, 67, 68, 70 years old, and you've had a Medicare Advantage plan, you could possibly switch to a Medigap plan, but you might have to go through health underwriting. And there's a lot of exceptions, just like any federal type of administered program, there's exceptions to the exceptions to the exceptions. And for you to find out whether you can, in fact, switch back to original Medicare and get a Medicare supplement and get out of a Medicare Advantage with all of the, the pre-authorizations and the, the, the networks and everything, um, you'd have to talk to uh, a broker, an agent. And if you don't have one you can trust, again, uh, give us a call, fill out the form below, and then we'll put you in touch with uh, someone that we've uh, vetted and that we trust and uh, we'll take care of you. So give us a call and uh, we can uh, find out. All right, um, I'm going right into it. Uh, my uh, part one of uh, this multiple series uh, video on financial assistance and everything, the, the, the part one, the introduction was way too long. I apologize to everybody out there. It was, yeah, it was, it was way too long. Um, I can't go back there and edit now because it'll ruin, ruin the whole metrics and everything. So I just have to leave it up there. So Zero introduction on this particular one, pretty much, I think it was what, a 30 second introduction. Okay, number 29, um, I'm gonna stay with Medicare here a little bit. A lot of people don't realize when they're receiving disability that they can also receive Medicare. Medicare automatically, they, they send you your card and the packet in the mail about 100 days before you're on disability for two years. So once you're on disability for two years, which, I have no idea that's how Congress wrote the act. In my personal two cents, I think, you know, people on disability need health care. So they should get it as soon as they're approved for disability. Um, another thing, a lot of people, uh, um, and, and this is going to save a lot of people money if they know this, is that people on the disability, they move or whatever the case may be after they're approved and they don't realize that they're going to get Medicare. And a lot of people go out there and buy private insurance or stay on the spouse's uh, health insurance plan when in fact they are entitled, they will be entitled to Medicare. So watch out for that card and make sure uh, you uh, you know make a decision. If the spouse's uh, health insurance is the cheapest way to go, then go ahead and with the best benefits, stay on that but you do have an alternative of uh, switching over to Medicare. You can decline it. So if you two years comes up and you say, no, I don't want it, you can decline it just like anybody else uh, at 65 years old. And another thing is if, uh, if you watch one of my other videos that you know that uh, sometimes disability approvals take months, if not years. And when you're finally approved, you're looking at that check. Okay, I'm going to get that back pay. I'm going to get that check. You know, again, watch my video on uh, approval disability. But you're getting, you're looking at that check. You you want that money. You need that money. It's a, you know it's, you've been waiting for it. You earned it. You paid into the system. You're going to get it. But if you've been waiting for two years, you're going to get that check, and then probably within a week or so, you're going to get a Medicare card. You know, wait wait a second. I haven't been on Medicare for two years. Actually, you were approved two years ago or three years ago. So you've technically been on disability for two years. So you probably have Medicare day one if you've been waiting two years. 
So a lot of people miss that and they go out there and buy private insurance. So there's another thing, uh, save some money out there. Um, and to kind of stay on the disability note, watch my video and it goes into all the extra money. Uh, once you're approved, you have to make sure your children are receiving benefits. If you're, if you're in retirement or disability and you have children under the age of 18 or still in high school, those children can receive benefits. If you have a spouse that stays home to take care of those children that are under 16 years old or that became disabled before the age of 22, then they can get what's called auxiliary child and care. I did a video on that one too. So I'll, I'll put it in the description uh, uh, down below there. All right, um, let's go on to number 30. We're staying within the health care thing. I'm gonna move from the health care here in a little bit, but um, number 30 is the Affordable Care Act, marketplace insurance, Obamacare, whatever you wanna call it. Um, subsidies, a lot of people are not getting the subsidies they need to pay for their monthly premiums. So when you sign up on Marketplace, again, give us a call and we can put you in touch with a, an agent or broker in your particular area that'd be able to take care of you. But you can get two different financial assistance programs. There are two different financial assistance programs with the Affordable Care Act, and that is subsidies and cost sharing. So when you apply, if you did it yourself or somebody did it for you, you have to make sure you check to make sure it was all done correctly. If you if you change your jobs, you um, get you know you uh, get a raise or you start reducing your hours or something like that. Your subsidies, how much you're getting in subsidies, these are basically um, advanced tax credits from next year's taxes. So if you do the calculation wrong this year and Next year, when you do your taxes, you might get some money back or you might actually have to pay. So it's very important that you estimate correctly for the premium subsidies and for the cost sharing. So cost sharing is when you go to the doctor, if, 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 if you get these uh, subsidies, then the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare will help you pay for some of the doctor visits and some of the hospital visits or sometime, uh, some type of treatment. So make sure you do that. All right. Um, 31. There are other programs. If you don't want to get the uh, Affordable Care Act, you don't want to get Obamacare. If you're not entitled to Medicare yet, uh, you don't have group health insurance through a, an employer or anything. There's also things called short-term medical. Um, and again, give us a call and we can put you in touch with a broker. But short-term medical, you can uh, short-term, it's about a year. You can usually extend it for another year. So those are options. So if you're you know, 62, 63, 64, and you're a few years away from Medicare, give us a call. We'll put you in someone, touch with someone to check out whether it's best for you to go with the, the Affordable Care Act marketplace insurance or whether it's better to go short-term medical for a year or two until you get on there. Okay, number 32, food stamps. I worked at the, uh, the Department of Welfare before I worked uh, at the Social Security Administration and food stamps. Um, I kind of, uh, you know, working in the, the government bureaucracy, I actually kind of liked doing food stamps because it was so clean and quick and you could put, I mean, you could, i I could tell you many, many stories of people coming in here. You've got uh, a young mother and two children, abusive, uh, house, um, husband or, and they, they just, you know, leave the house with nothing and they need food and take the application, look at their documents, and it was awesome. I just handed the EBT card over and said, you know, the, the money will be on there first thing tomorrow morning. So food stamps are um, essential for some people out there that uh, really need it. So don't feel, you know, pride or anything like that. If you need to, to obviously eat and feed your family, go down, file for food stamps. And the same place you file for food stamps in your particular state is also the place that you can obviously sign up for Medicaid. If you're receiving uh, uh, you know, Medicare as well, then you can go down there and sign up for the Medicare savings program, which we talked about in another video. All right, moving right along. Um, people in my... Uh, uh, Got some comments on my uh, first videos, uh, part one, part two, part three, that said I'm, uh, I'm too slow. I'm uh, trying to go slow, and um, some people don't like the fast salesman talk, but I guess some people do. But I can talk faster, but I'm not going to. Um, all right, 33. Um, 
not so much uh, uh, getting extra money, but uh, make sure you don't lose money. Um, please be careful. Watch out for those around you, your loved ones. If uh, you see someone going down, you know, at, uh, you see some little old lady at uh, Target or Walmart and she's on the phone and she's buying gift cards. You know, hey, what's up? How you doing today? Everything good? Um, there's a lot of scams out there. People calling and, you know, the kind of uh, jumping in your computer and saying you've got this thing or you've got a warrant out for your arrest from the Social Security Administration. I, when I was the district manager of the Social Security Administration, I was sitting in my office, one of the third busiest offices in the country, 100 employees, sitting in my office, picked up my cell phone, my personal cell phone, and uh, somebody on the other says, yeah, we've got a warrant out for your arrest because you didn't pay Social Security, and so we're going to cancel your Social Security and your Social Security number and stuff like that. And I'm like, huh, really? Oh, that's interesting. What's your name? Oh, John Smith. And what, what's your deal? Didn't know what deal was. District office um, in Dallas. Okay. So I pull up the system with all the Social Security employees. And I said, oh, there's no John Smith in Dallas. How'd you know that? He says, well, I'm sitting here at the Social Security Administration. Click. I should have played that a little bit longer, but I was busy. So, so please watch out for other people. Um, Social Security is uh, the Social Security employees are way too busy to call you and uh, talk to you out of the blue. If you have a current pending case, if you recently, recently filed for disability or retirement and you know they possibly need the proofs and they need to talk to you, then they will call you. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I can tell you from personal experience for a few decades, yeah, we're, we're not going to call you unless we've got something pending on there. So if you get a call of someone that says they're Social Security, Call the 800 number, 800-772-1213 and confirm and say, hey, I just got this call and they'll be able to look in there and say, you know, tell you whether it's uh, correct or not. All right. Um, 34. Um, some um, counties, particularly counties I found, but so, some cities and some states have respite care. Um, so if you know anybody that is taking care of an elderly person, a disabled person that can't take care of themselves, Alzheimer's, I've had a lot of cases, uh, people with Alzheimer's, and they're taking care of their loved ones, and it's just emotionally and, and physically exhausting. So reach out to um, your local county or city and say, hey, um, you know, can uh, you know, can we get some help here? Can I kind of take a breather? And what they'll do is they'll come out to your house and they'll take care of your loved one while you can go out there and, you know, go watch a movie or, you know, relax and head to the beach or something like that. So that is a service a lot of places throughout the country are, are providing. So make sure if you know anybody, um, definitely go there. All right. Um, number 35, Irma. Irma is a extra premium on your Part B. Congress decided, uh, Medicare Part B, Cong Congress decided a few years ago that uh, in order to shore up the Medicare trust fund, they needed more money coming in. So they set up kind of a progressive, I guess, a tax, a premium. If you're just, uh, you know, if you make uh, this year, it's about 102000 or so for a single, a couple of hundred thousand for a married couple. And basically, if you have that high income and the income is two years ago, just that's how the, the whole system worked, because right now, Social Security Administration doesn't know how much you made last year until you uh, file your taxes and it's you know sent to the IRS and it's sent back to the Social Security Administration. And we, the Social Security Administration, doesn't know how much the uh, Part B premium or the Part D. This also accounts for. This also applies to Part D. Doesn't know how much the Part D, as in David, for the drugs is for the next year until Congress decides at the end of the year. So uh, that's why it goes two years back. And the problem there is you might be. You might get a letter that says, okay, you're not going to pay, you know, $170 and change like everybody else in the country for Part B because two years ago, you and your husband made $300,000. So you're going to get an extra IRMA premium. And what a lot of people don't understand is they can appeal that. There are certain life changing events and you can file uh, you can download a form it's the ssa 44 
and it's a pretty quick little form and you put your name and social security number and stuff up there and you say, um, don't charge me the extra premium. Yes, we were making $300,000 two years ago, but we have since stopped that work and now we're not receiving that anymore. You fill that out on the SSA 44, you send it to Social Security, and they will adjust your Part B and your Part D premium. But one of the things I wish, I guess, Congress didn't include, I've unfortunately had to deny thousands of thousands of these. And because two years ago, people, you know, once you get after 65 or so, a lot of people downsize, they sell their house that they've been in for 20 or 30 years. And that amount counts as essentially income, a modified adjusted gross income for Social Security. It might not count for your IRS taxes, but in terms of this particular extra premium, it does. And unfortunately, Congress made zero allocation for that type of thing. So you get this extra thing and they say, if you think it's wrong, it says, well, that was just a one time thing. I sold my house. I've you know, it's the first time I've ever done it. And that's where the income comes from. And that's not regular income. It was just a sell of a house. And I'm sorry to tell you, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to pay the, uh, the, the extra premium for that one year until that, you know, the, the, the next year when everything goes back to normal. So unfortunately, that's the reality of that. At number 36, so 36, um, something near and dear to my heart, um, free courses out there. If you go to your local college or university, usually they have kind of uh, community educational events and classes that are nominal fee, you know, 10, 20, $30, or some of them are completely free. And I'll give you a, a bigger inside scoop. Um, I was, I have, I still am a university adjunct professor. I've taught at the university for a few decades. Um, when I worked at Social Security Administration during the day, I'd work there during the day, go home, grab something to eat, and then I'd go to the university and I'd teach uh, classes three nights a week. And uh, yeah, after being wore out and inundated with everything bureaucratic, I was like, yeah, I'm going to class. But as soon as you stand up in front of class, a bunch of young kids and uh, makes you young. I wish I would have brought my hair back, but you can't have everything. Here's the trick. If you've got a class, uh, any class, Shakespeare, engineering, history, whatever the case may be, and uh, you're really interested in that and you don't want to pay for the class, you don't want to sign up and go through all that stuff, walk down to the university or the college and then go into that uh, professor's um, office and say, hey, you know, I'm retired. I really like what you're teaching. I've always been interested in it. Can I kind of hang out and just sit in the back? And, you know, I won't ask questions or anything like that. And I pretty much guarantee you they'll say, yeah, yeah, come on in. Because um, I've personally done it several times. I've had many. I've had this uh, one gentleman. He uh, was a doctor, a rheumatoid arthritis doctor. And uh, unfortunately, his, uh, his wife was uh, uh, suffering from Alzheimer's. And so he needed kind of, I guess that was kind of his his break um, from taking care of her, he would come to my class every single week. And, and I always encourage them to answer, you know, to ask questions and stuff because, you know, they were, you know, always had the best questions. Um, so yeah, go down there and say, Hey, can I hang out? And you know, you don't have to take the test or anything like that. I never, I've had dozens and dozens and dozens of people just sit in the back of my class in particular classes or the entire semester, you know, if you want to take the test, go for it. If not, you know, we'll, you know, no problem. All right. Um, number 37, veterans health insurance. So I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Um, I didn't retire. I was only in eight years. It's like, you know, 40 years in the Air Force, but sorry, Air Force people out there. Um, but because I was only in eight years, didn't become disabled or anything like that, not entitled to veterans insurance you know, the, the, the VA or, you know, TRICARE or anything like that. However, for low income veterans, there are benefits you can apply to. Even if you were in, if you, if you got a, a pretty much an honorable discharge, um, it really depends when you're serving in situations and everything, but there are a lot of variables, reach out to the VA and say, you know, hey, I need health insurance, I'm low income, I'm a veteran, and usually it takes a little bit of time, but they can get you set up with the Veterans Administration uh, benefits. 
So I would definitely check that out. And uh, so that's number 37. Number 38, um, here's another one kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, a website called VetTix, V-E-T-T-I-X. And it's a, uh, a free program um, of discounts, of some are not even discounts, completely just free tickets. So if you're looking for stuff to do, and I've used this, uh, it's pretty easy to get set up. You go onto the website, I'll, I'll put it uh, in the description there, vettix, I think it's a .org. Um, but you have to uh, uh, give, send them your DD-214 to prove you're a veteran. So if, so if you know anybody that's a veteran, get them hooked up with this because they'll take you to the place I've seen for free Oh, Tony Bennett, uh, John Fogarty, the old CCR guy, um, U2, um, George Strait, uh, yeah, um, some baseball games. I've seen many Cirque shows, uh, Jewel, um, yeah, I've probably seen about 20 or 30 different groups and bands and, uh, yeah, so shows and everything, so, um, so they have a system. You go in there, you, you, you register. Um, and you send them your DD-214. They also have a system where they can they can check it automatically through the VA. And then once they approve you, then you can just go in there and put your city and what type of thing you're interested in, sporting events, you know, um, you know, concerts or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty pretty awesome. So even if you're not a veteran, get one of your veteran people to uh, to hook up so they can take you. 39, National Parks. I think pretty much everybody knows this one, um, that National Parks have kind of senior passes. So definitely uh, reach out to the National Parks. And what a lot of people don't know is also state parks sometimes have those type of senior passes and veteran passes. So state and uh, federal, national parks, uh, veterans, and senior discounts. So definitely go on that. Um, number 40, for those people on retirement, disability, survivor benefits, SSI, uh, Direct Express. And for those who have a Direct Express, you know where I'm coming from here. Um, Direct Express is essentially the government kind of uh, uh, debit card that if you're receiving federal benefits, Social Security benefits, and if you don't have a bank account for a direct deposit, they give you this direct express card. And let's say, how should I say this? The customer service on that is wanting. Um, even as a Social Security employee, you know, if you, if you have an issue with your direct express, something happens, it gets lost, or you, you, know, you didn't get the money in there, or, you, know, you need a new pen, or whatever the case may be, it's very difficult to get in touch with those people. And you go down to the Social Security Administration, and you think, well, maybe Social Security can help me. Not, not much, um, if at all, um, because we would just have to get on the phone, too, and then you'd have to be there. And it's so long story short. Avoid Direct Express if you possibly can. And how do you avoid that is set up a bank account, you know, bank account routing number to have your benefits go in there to your local bank. And that way you can avoid the whole Direct Express nightmare. And the, But the reason is most people get Direct Express is, they, is because they've got some type of financial issues that they can't open a bank account. However, what a lot of people don't know is there are some banks out there that will even whatever your history is they will set you up with a bank account if that is specifically to receive federal monies so if you're on social security retirement disability ssi or something like that you know and go down call every bank in your in, in your town and say hey you know i've got issues but i need some place to put my you know, social security, retirement check or disability check, and they just might be able to, to give you an account. So definitely check that out. All right. Uh, number 41. Am I doing better this time than uh, video one, two, and three? A little bit faster, right? All right. Um, if, uh, yeah, on my other ones, uh, you probably already see them, you know, you can always click the little speed up thing or slow down or skip or do what my wife does. I'm, I'm sure she wished she had that button on me. Skip 50 seconds three years, whatever the case may be. 41, disability to uh, dib to rib. Um, not a lot of people are losing money um, because they don't realize when you're on disability, 
if you're on disability starting 50 years old, whatever, and then you're on disability for, you know, 15 years, and then once you hit your full retirement age, you're no longer on disability, you're on retirement. So a lot of people call me up and they say, I'm 75 years old and I'm on disability. I said, no, 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 you're not. Sorry, you're, you're not on disability. Um, everybody in the country gets switched to retirement once they hit their full retirement. And it's, you know, it's, it's check stays the same. Everything stays the same. It's just they stop taking out of the disability trust fund and start taking out of the retirement trust fund. But the key to you is um, you're no longer limited to how much you can work. So if you can work, you know, uh, even a little bit, you don't have to notify Social Security that you're going to go to work and how much you're making because you're on retirement and you're past your full retirement age. So, you know, if you're able to go back to work, you know, make a million bucks uh, a month and go for it. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and if you work, um, even after your full retirement, age, you're 65 or even after you start collecting benefits or anything like that, if you work and that's one of your high 35 years of earnings again social security determines your benefit amount by your high 35 years of earnings so if this year is one year high ones because you work then social security will recalculate your benefits so next year you'll get essentially two jumps you'll get the cola increase whatever congress decides um, which is always two percent in my personal estimation it's always like two percent lower than it actually should be but anyway um and you'll get your recalculation of your pi or your primary insurance amount based on your high 35 one of your high 35 years the previous year so that's auto automatic you don't have to do anything completely automatic um all right 42 uh this one is uh flex cards all right flex cards you see them advertised all over the place um, the FCC and Medicare is kind of clamping down on, uh, advertising of these. These are basically, uh, um, there's flex cards and then there's flex cards. They, there is no common accepted nomenclature for what these things are. Um, you've got flex cards in the sense of these are usually through Medicare Advantage plans and the flex cards are. Um, oh, we'll give you, you know, uh, you know, $500 of dental and $500 of vision. And then we'll give you this flex card with another $500 on it. So you can use it. You can flex, use it for dental or vision or hearing or whatever you want for this. So it's those type of flex cards are out there. And then there's also flex cards out there for like groceries and paying your electricity and stuff like that. And they do exist. They, I, I did a video on that. I'll put the video in the description below to give you more detail. They do exist, but they're hyped up way more than they should be. Um, and for quite a few years, it's diminishing now because uh, the government is coming down. You've got this kind of advertising where they would find the best flex card in the country and then advertise it to everybody in the country. So they would, these big call centers, these big private private equity, Medicare sales call centers. You know, you see the famous, uh, you know, football players and actors and comedians on TV. Um, yeah. So you call those places and then they say, oh yeah, yeah, well, that's, uh, yeah, that's not for you. So be careful of those. Don't pick a Medicare plan just based on, you know, $50 of, you know, groceries or free ice cream or whatever like that. You got to pick the kind of the total package. If you got any, uh, if you want help on that, obviously you can give us a call. Um, another thing, uh, given my decades of experience in Social Security and helping people out in the difficult times of their life in terms of uh, losing a loved one's um, legal help particularly like wills, estate planning, help with, uh, also help with uh, landlords, pretty much any type of legal help. If you need some type of legal help, um, you know, uh, help with the will, um, just, I guess I'm being a little bit repetitive. Um, uh, you got a, a fight with a landlord. Um, you've got some type of contract you've got an issue with. Universities, law schools, law schools att uh, attached to universities, and the uh, bar association in your particular town, a lot of those have free legal help. So go down to those places and say, here's my issue. And they'll tell you whether that's something they can help you with. 
um, estate planning if they can't help you with uh, that and give us a call. And uh, we're kind of getting together with a, uh, uh, a national um, uh, law association of estate planners so we can uh, find you, uh, can refer you to a good estate planner in your particular area to, to make sure everything goes well. All right, 44. This was actually sent in by a subscriber based on uh, she watched the, uh, the first video in uh, the part one. Um, USDA Rural Development 502 loan. The government subsidizes uh, house payments for a very, very low income people. And you can go into uh, the USDA um, website and single family housing direct help and uh, see if you can get uh, some type of uh, assistance to help. Um, yeah, she says, uh, um, make sure you roll all costs into the loan and not pay out of pocket. She said uh, um, the loan officer that she used was in training and left that part out and cost her a little bit. So make sure you roll all the costs into the loan and not pay any out of pocket. So uh, thanks Daisy for that. So if you got anything else, uh, anybody out there, um, I think this will do it for this particular uh, part of the video. And then uh, based on y'all's responses like this, I'm going to add one more and I'll just keep adding more and more programs and more particular state programs. And we'll make this a one-stop resource for everything to help you and your loved ones and neighbors and community out. So make sure you share and uh, that I do better, a little bit faster, less repetitive, less repetitive, less repetitive. All right. Have a beautiful day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.